in case we get another epic <gasps> and the festivities holy crap who said and the festivities as a main deck is stupid and the festivities with the o'hare and torbrin out this is gonna deal i, I don't care what it deals to us we're gonna swipe but they just give it up and the festivities that ended all the festivities Ladies and gentle mages, civilians across the multiverse, welcome back to another episode of Man of Man, and today we've got a juice so far, but before we dig into the deck, make sure to leave a like, the button looks just like this and it helps out the channel tremendously, I greatly appreciate it. Let's go ahead and dig right in. So we're just going for burn, that's right, this, oh, this is not mono red, this is not mono red, because we do have Scalding Viper, I am running blue lands here just for the Scalding Viper, having that steam clean, return target not land permit to its owner's hand, it can save you games, That is that gives you something that burn usually can't can't really address so i am absolutely loving this and we're gonna get reasons why it's also synergenic with other stuff here so we got the torbrin torbrin red source you control deals damage it's gonna deal that much plus two pretty awesome right let's run it alongside o'hare oxenol the deepest might we're gonna have two of these bad boys so these are both legendaries so just kind of work out nicely anyway even if you really preferred one over the other they're legendaries so let's run them side by side and just see how much damage we can do so this one also um this is a brand new from ixalan river red source you control deals damn bit it's non-combat damage so torbrin actually is combat damage as well whereas the deepest might is only non-combat damage so that is kind of worth noting but again, we have so much burn that it is so awesome. So I, got, I do have light up the stage in the festivities as little two offs. Well, light up the stage, I guess, as as three or four gets a little cloggy. So I do kind of like it at there. And the festivities does help uh, against like uh, land war elves or something like that. But let's go ahead and just get into the like the what we really like. All of our two drops. Look at all of our two drops. Cemetery Gatekeeper. First strike whenever this enters the battlefield, exile a card from a graveyard. Whenever a player plays a land or casts a spell, if it shares a card type, it's gonna deal two damage. Same thing with the Scalding Viper. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, any spell, with three or less, it deals one damage. The Great Revel. Whenever a player casts a spell with mana value three or less, it deals two damage to you. So again, we are punishing them for playing anything. If it shares a card type, if it's three or less, they got double card drops here. Like the Oxenal and Torbrin. If they if, if they have this out, they they're just they're just shaking. They're scared to cast really anything. We've got Kamano, play a fire, Valdair and Epicure to kind of just deal extra damage here with them. And it's great. The Scalding Viper, again, with that steam, I cannot express it enough. The steam clean is so wonderful. It helps out a lot versus tempo decks. They play something, you just keep burning them out, and it just gives you that tool that you kind of need. But I've got the O'Hare Oxenal, Torbrand. We're just here to just blow some stuff up and hopefully make some big booms with these big red creatures so consider joining the channel that helped me out as a content creator i greatly appreciate that you'd be supporting me go ahead and subscribe if you have not already and without further ado let's get ready to vanquish some enemies guy to go how you doing here looking this is like a pretty gosh oh hold on i I'm not joking you. Okay, let's well, first off, first things first. Let's go ahead and give our opponent the friendly mulligan. Hello. Second off, I swear, I, Boy Scouts Honor. I thought this was a two-landed hand. I thought that Kamano was a mountain. We end, we end up getting a little lucky there because we do top deck into a land. But I I really I would never keep a one-landed hand. So we do get lucky. I would rather be lucky than good. So all right, all right, gonna gonna luck box this one out. So got the Kamano faces Kagas on. Everything's looking good. Got the Lanyor Elves and an old growth troll. Okay. Um, now we gotta make a decision. We do get another land too, so we, again, we're just really, really fortunate there. So let's see what we got. We got, we can put a plus one, plus one counter on whatever we put. The Cemetery Gatekeeper only gets up to a three, unfortunately, so no matter what we do here, it's not looking amazing. I guess we'll just go for the Epicure. It, it's not great. The, the point here is I kind of want to go for like a blood token, but the cemetery gatekeeper, I'm not even really sure that we're going to like um, outspeed them. So I might just, I, I might just bend the gatekeeper. Wolf Willow Haven. Okay. Um, and a Palookos Reward. Okay, so looking pretty scary here, but, but, but in a big old booty, they are, they have no more hand. So we kind of know what we're dealing with. So that's kind of nice. I'm going to go for the blood token here. Let's get rid of this gatekeeper. We're probably not going to win a race. And it's not big enough to really matter, so let's get rid of that gatekeeper there. Alright, so now we gotta make a decision. Do I, I kind of... Do I want to go for the pathway or the steam vents? We do need a blue source here to kind of put... We have to kind of set them back in the tempo. I think we're just gonna pay the two life. 
Go for the steam clean. <laughs> We're gonna have to do this. Steam clean, I guess over the old growth troll. I guess. I guess. I'm not really sure what we're going to do with this Pelucranos. I I want to keep the Pelucranos. Oh, Vivian. Oh, God. Oh, gosh. All right. So, Vivian. Ooh, hello. This is going to be rough. So, 3-3. Three, three. And I'm trying to think what we can do here. Obviously, we have another Scalding Viper. I'm really surprised that they're not swinging in. I can't really effectively... I, I wouldn't have really wanted to, like, double block and go for Play With Fire. So, get another Scalding Viper, which is nice. I think we'll just go for blue, sure. I think that was a little... Hmm. What do we do here? Vivian, man, Monster's Advocate. Well, I mean, if we just drop... To yeah, let's just drop Torbrand. This is pretty easy. I mean, it's either that or go for Scalding Viper. Let's go ahead and give him a thinking. It's either, it's either we drop in Torbrand or we drop a Scalding Viper and... and um. Do the on their Vivian and like a Lanyuar Elf, but then we're just kind of hoping that they don't. But then, yeah, then we're just kind of hoping that they don't top deck into a land. I mean, I guess maybe. Maybe we just get rid of this Vivian. This Vivian has to go. It's going to be a problem the whole entire time. So I guess we'll go for Vivian and go for Scalding Viper. And then maybe we can just start burning them if they go for like the old growth troll. Or if they want to go for Vivian, at least we just kind of get like a tempo swing. Um. If we drop Torbrin, the Pelucanos Reborn, we still have to double block it. So that's not good. So, okay, so there's Kiora. Okay, so at least we get a little bit of burn. We hit him with that little burn with the Scalding Viper. So. <laughs> Old Growth Troll, we get a burn. There we go. We get a little bit of burn again. So they do draw, which is really, really unfortunate. But at least we're burning them a little bit. So now we gotta get this Torbrin down. So the Torbrin. Every single time they'll play something, the, the Scalding Vipers will hit them for three instead. So let's go ahead and get that down. Hopefully, obviously playing Mono Green, they don't have a whole lot of interaction. So Vivian, we don't burn them that way because Vivian obviously costs five. So no, we're getting a little nervous. Don't respect nature. We're but if they do want to play stuff, it is gonna it is gonna cost them some precious life here. All right, so three three. We will Blue Grails Reborn eventually can give them lifelink, but if we kill it, it won't give them the, the tokens back with the etching because it'll exile. So, okay. <laughs> they were looking, I, I don't know where we sit right now. I still have a Scalding Viper. I think I might use Scalding Viper to maybe bounce Vivian again. One drop. All right. Shivan Reef. Okay. Well... I think we're just going to put down all these Scowling Vipers. <laughs> if we keep putting down all these Scowling Vipers, I mean, they're, they're going to have to, like, really start sweating. So, maybe... Play with Fire does four. I'm just trying to think this out. I know, kind of, playing slow is not really the best for content's sake, but we deal three to your face with Torbrin. Now... Let's go for the Scowling Viper, and then we're going for the other Scowling Viper, and we're going to have to maybe bounce a Cure or the Vivian... But I think we'll bounce Kiora because if they want to see that, 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 let's do that. Let's bounce Kiora because if they want to play Kiora, we've got two Scalding Vipers backed by a Torbren. So if they want to play that Kiora, they are really gonna have to pay for it. I think I, I think I like that. Even though the Vivian does cost five, they can just replay it anyway. They're gonna create these three threes every turn. Yeah, they're giving them vigilance. That one actually has reach, which is actually kind of interesting. One has reach. But... Ooh, O'Hare. Okay, good lord. Okay, so now we got O'Hare. Okay, so O'Hare with the Torbrin. If I play with fire on your face, I think let's just do this. I know we could wait, but I don't care. I'm getting a little giddy. Ooh, the Great Revel. Um, you know, let's keep it. Let's just let's just keep it, and then make sure they can't really cast anything. So that with that, let's play with fire. How much did it do? That did like a six, right? I think it's six. I actually did. I kind of missed that, but yeah, it does. O'Hare, because the O'Hare has four, and it has plus two. I think it's six, but... Now they're down to nine life. They can't really... I mean, let's see what they do here. They can't really do a whole lot of anything. I mean, we really have them kind of, like, bogged down, but the only problem with the Vivian eventually is going to be able to give them um, kind of a win condition here, because they, they keep... Ooh. Whoa, you're swinging! Whoa, you're swinging? Whoa! Okay, I... I don't know about that, but 
So the O'Hare is only non-combat damage, while the Torbrin is all damage. So if we just block with this Epicure, that's four, and that's, yeah, this is fine. I mean, this, this is enough to kill you, and because we have the etching of Kamanu, it's going to exile. It's going to get exiled. So, this is fine. We're not, they're not going to get the replacements. So, I just want to make sure that I'm not, miss, not missing anything. I don't think I am. Sure. They do gain life with this life linker. So, they go up to 13, but now that it gets exiled. So, that's that's fine. All right. So, we got, we got the Great Revel, and we got a Scalding Viper. I think I am going to play this just to kind of further punish them. And, um... Oh, darn. Ooh, let's, get, let's give him an oops. Okay. So, the Great Revel is both players three and less and then the scalding viper is just our opponent that's what it is so yeah we actually make a little bit of an oopsie we hit our ourselves in the face with the great revel unnecessarily but it is what it is yeah the scalding viper is only the opponent the great revel is both so gotta make make note of that all right so next turn we can just pop the blood token if we don't get anything too crazy i don't have the, the board to really swing in Steam Mental. Let's just go ahead and use the Blood Token here. Let's use the Blood Token here. See if we can just find something else, some other type of burn. Sockens in, not really the best. I guess we can kind of flash it in. Not flash it in, but you know what I'm saying. Get two, one, they're colorless spirit tokens, so that kind of sucks. That doesn't really work with Torbrin, but it still is something nonetheless. I just don't think we really have anything, so we kind of have the board matched up. The way we're going to win is by getting something to burn them a lot. And if they have, excuse me, they have Vivian, we're kind of in semi-trouble here. So whenever you cast a creature spell, if this is over three, they're going to, they're going to, oh no, 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 no. All right. So they go for Cavalier of Thorns. That is not going to burn. We're not going to be able to burn them. And they get an Uvenvolt Oddity for free. Okay. I'm getting a little nervous now. Okay. Now, now is the time we're getting a little nervous. So they are running big things, obviously. So we're not going to be able to burn them with the Great Revel or anything else. I guess we'll go ahead and put this down just for defense, I guess. Or maybe should we just keep it in case we get another epic? <gasps> end the festivities! Holy crap! Who said end the festivities as a main deck is stupid? End the festivities with the O'Hare and Torbrin out. This is going to deal... I, I don't care what it deals to us. We are going to swipe the... They just give it up! End the festivities! That ended all the festivities. DJ Sammy, how you doing here? Looking like a good hand to me. Looking like a good mono red hand to me. Let's go ahead and drop the epic here and things are looking good. All right. I mean, playing just some good old classic burn, unless you face like a C-Note Scout, that's fine. And they actually did burn themselves in just to play this, so that's nice. Ooh, and we get the O'Hara Oxenal. That is absolutely wonderful here. I think we're going to swing in. What I'm planning on, what I think they're going to do, they're not going to block, and then I'm going to be able to light up the stage. So let's go light up the stage with the spectacle. That is crazy cool. And, ooh, okay. Not that, uh, the land we don't really care about because it's the end of to our next turn, so I don't really, I'm not too bummed out about the land. But what I am a little bummed out about is the O'Hare. O'Hare Axe. I'm only running two, so a little bit clogged up here. It is not very efficient, but it's okay. I'm going to Flame of Fire on the Prosperous Innkeeper. I know what this deck is going to do. This deck is trying to get out the Wild Growth Walker and Amalia. And then it just kind of does its thing with the, Wild, uh, with the Prosperous Innkeeper. So let's go and get rid of you. And ooh, we got the Cemetery Gatekeeper. So now let's go for Cemetery Gatekeeper and exile a creature. So now we're going to burn them every single time they play a creature. Which, again, I know what this deck does. It's a combo deck. It's wanting... They, they have either like the Lunark, which some are, some are in white, which this one doesn't seem to, to have white in it. But what they do is they have Prosperous Innkeeper, Wild Growth Walker, and Amalia. And when you get that combo out, you just play one creature and then it's just a, a loop until you get to 2020 Amalia. So Collected Company, here we go. Ugh. Let's see what you got for me. Oh, just an Amalia. Okay, that is pretty good. But they do have Amalia, so they have the Prosperous Innkeeper, Wild Growth Walker... Definitely one of my least favorite decks to play. I'm not going to lie. Just because it, 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 if they just get the combo, they just get it. And it just feels very, very um, deflating. <laughs> but let's see what we got. We still have, I mean, we're a burn deck. We've got plenty of disruption and removal. So hopefully they don't have an innkeeper and a wild growth walker. But, you know, I don't, now with the gatekeeper, the O'Hare is going to hit them for four instead of two every single turn. So, if they play creatures, they're going to have to pay for it. And that's what I love about this deck so much. Ooh, a Scalding Viper. Looks good. Looks good. 
Yeah, this is pretty good. Again, this is this deck is so so awesome. I mean, so we're gonna go for Scalding Viper, bump up the Amalia to their hand, and if they want to replay it, so Steam Clean, baby, Steam Clean that Amalia. We're gonna pay the three life. Absolutely, do not care. And if they want to replay it, if they want to replay it. Taka, oh, that's fine. That's fine. It's not a big deal. So they are running Lunark Veteran, but they don't have the uh, the white yet. So. Yeah, that, this deck is dangerous. This deck is absolutely super dangerous. There's the Wild Growth Walker. Okay, let's see if we can let's see if we can deal enough damage here. So down to eight, and let's go Scalding Viper now. Yeah, I don't care about the Gatekeeper. That's fine. If they want to play down the Wild Growth Walker and the Gatekeeper, we're gonna deal four damage per creature. So Wild Growth Walker, there we go. Viper, boom, four. Oh my God, Oxino with the Viper Gatekeeper. Let's go. X-Rage? X-Rage? X-Rage. How you doing here? All right. Looking good. Looking good. Welcome to the show, X-Rage. Um, yeah, I guess we'll call it red. We do have the Shivan Reef, just in case we do get into our only blue card in the entire deck, being the Steam Clean little Viper. Ooh, didn't have the Bugbear. Swift Sphere. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and just hit him with the Play of Fire, and then we can go for Cemetery Gatekeeper. I think that's pretty good. Yeah. So, Mono Red versus Mono... Well, I guess we're not Mono Red. I'm not Mono Red. And I don't even know if they are mono red either, so I guess we should probably wait a little bit before I make such uh, assertions. But yeah, we can get rid of the Swiss Fear, or we can go and get rid of our own Play With Fire. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of our own Play With Fire. Just, that way, I'm assuming they have their own form of removal. So if they want to get rid of the Gatekeeper, they're gonna have to pay two that way. I guess. Yeah, see, that's the, so that's the best way to do it. Because if we if we would have called Creature, they would have Play With Fire and then played the Soul Scar Mage. So I guess we get we get two damage out of it that way by going for the instant. That could matter. I'm telling you, it seems a little goofy, but that could matter in the grand scheme of things. Let's go for Bone Crusher Giant and Kamado, and then the next turn we'll have something big to play. So that two damage in a mirror match versus burn that we got with the gatekeeper by clicking the instant could be the be all end all. It really does matter. Rolling Vortex. Alright, deals one damage for us every turn, but we're looking pretty good. And now we got a steam vents. So. You know what? I think I'm gonna put this down. Enters tap, and we're gonna go for the Bone Crusher Giant. Bone Crusher Giant is actually better than even playing the Torbrand or the O'Hare. The O'Hare is not doing too much for us right now, unless we have something else to burn it with. And then the Torbrin is better to have the Bone Crusher out and then have Torbrin rather than swinging with Torbrin. Plus, we saved the life on the Steam Vents. I think we're curving out very, very nicely in this match. Wow, they, are they gonna, they're not gonna play anything. I mean, we're looking real good. Now we got an epic here. Oh, this is looking pretty dynamite. We're going to go for the Torbrin first. Let's definitely go for Torbrin just because that is... Uh, O'Hare is only non-combat damage, and we're going to put a world of hurt on them here. This is going to be, what, a 7 plus 4. It's going to be 11 damage if they don't have any sort of interaction. And then next turn, we can go in for epic here. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but if we draw a land... If we draw a land, and we have O'Hare... And then we drop the Valdaren Epicure with Torbrin and our Oxinal Deepest Might out here. Woo! -wee, that might be lights out. So down it's eight to eighteen. We're we are absolutely winning the race. Skewer the critics is just not going to be enough to really offset the match here. So uh, light up the stage. Okie dokie, and they get a Kamanu again. That's just not nearly enough. Or oh, Swift Spear. Okay. Let's see if we can get into a land. If we get into a land, it's just like game over. No, get a cemetery gatekeeper, which is fine. Um, well, they do have the Kamano, and I have a, I have a Kamano in my graveyard. So if I go, let's just swing in here. I mean, I think the game's like pretty much over. I think, like I, said, I think it's pretty much over. So we're gonna chop like that. We we'll go down to four. This is actually technically not lethal, so I can't go for the hair. Let's go for the epic here. Deal three to them. And oh, actually, though, I, I forgot about the Rolling Vortex. So the Rolling Vortex is going to take them out. But I was going to say, the, the Cemetery Gatekeeper, I'm actually going to remove the Kamanu just so that we can uh, block them out from the uh, Kamanu, but the Vortex is going to take it anyway. So, GG's. Belial. How are we doing here at Belial? All right. Looking good. I'm going to go and stab myself in here just so we can get the up here down. Steam vents, always nice. With the Scalding Viper, I'm telling you, this Scalding Viper, being able to bounce something. It's just something that, like, Burn, like, can't do. So the Scalding Viper is really, really good, man. It really is. It really is. 
Um, let's try a few. We got the we got the blue. We have all the blue we'll ever need, so we're good there. And I'm gonna go ahead and swing in here. Yep, sure. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Uh, nothing in the graveyard for the cemetery gatekeeper, so I guess we'll just keep up the bone crusher giant. Sure, whatever. Gotta be kind of careful though. This little um, this little goblin is kind of a pest. So the ooh, that's fine. We can just go for the bone crusher giant on this. That's no big deal. That's why we bone. That's why we crush bones around here. Yep, let's go and squash you. It does cost, but that's fine. We have to. I still want to get rid of it. So down to fifteen we go. Mm, yep, I think we'll just drop a bone crusher giant. Sometimes magic's pretty simple. Swing on in and be on our way. Seventeen to fifteen, but we do have a bone crusher giant, and we're kind of ahead on tempo. We are on the draw or the play, rather. Sorry, we're on the play, so we do have that. Ooh, rampaging ferocidon. I am actually not running this card. It is it is awesome. It's a it's a great card. I'm just personally not running it. Uh, maybe I should. I don't know. We'll see. I guess we'll just go ahead and bounce you. Let's go ahead and bounce you. Sure. So I could drop the cemetery gatekeeper, but I think they're gonna go ahead and. Hmm. Let's do this. Maybe the. I know that the, the Firebrand can get, pick us off on the Gatekeeper, but I don't I don't know. I like I said they're gonna they're gonna chump like I guess what could else have they have done? They would have gone for the Epicure if I don't drop the Gatekeeper. So they're gonna pick up. But I don't even know if I really want the Gatekeeper because if I burn myself. I don't know what they have in their deck. So if they swipe the board with like a Brotherhood, I, I don't know what they're running. I guess that maybe that maybe that was just a little too cute. Maybe I should have done that. I don't know. I guess the, I guess the, the logic was a little shaky there. But I don't think it's gonna matter. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's let's get back on track here. Eleven to fifteen. I think we're okay. Um. Let's see here. So they're just gonna what drop the Swift Spear. So Scalding Viper is gonna hit him. And Rampaging Ferocidon, we're gonna go ahead and hit him. Wonderful. They're completely tapped out. And now we've got another cemetery gatekeeper. Yeah, I don't know. I have to I have to go back and watch. Sometimes uh, sometimes I do go back and watch my stuff, and I'm like, what the heck was I thinking there? That might have been one of those times. I don't know what, what I was thinking, but so now we're gonna decide. We got Scalding Viper, Steam Vents. I think we're just gonna Steam Vent them again. We're just gonna keep up tempo, just bounce them. I'm sure they're like like shaking, you know, shaking their fists at the air. Uh, I guess we might as well swing off. They're tapped out, so they can't really do anything. They want to block the Epicure. That's gonna be too much damage. <laughs> just trade the Viper, I assume. Take the four, and then let's go for the Cemetery Gatekeeper. Let's make right on the Cemetery Gatekeeper. Of course, we're gonna take. Uh, let's take the. Let's take this little Goblin Pirate. I, again, I have to go back and look. I think I did goof that up though, because I don't know what I was really afraid of. But nevertheless, the Cemetery Gatekeeper. We are going to avenge them, and they don't want to pay it with the Gatekeepers too. Good game. All right, looks like a pretty gosh darn good hand here. Got the end of the festivities. Something. Oh, okay, there we go. Um. I think we're just going to use End the Festivities right away. I could go for Kamano turn one, but because we're playing its elves, typically, if it's Selesnya, I don't think they're really going for like elf tribal, so I think we'll just take the one for one on the End the Festivities. Yeah, if, if I see Selesnya, they're not going like elves, so they're not going to go super wide with elves, so we could have waited or something like that, but this is going to be a nightmare. Um, I can already tell it's going to be a nightmare. So the Bishop of Wings gained four life? This is not what we want to see. So I guess we'll just go ahead and bounce you. Is either that or go we, we can't yeah, it was either that or double Kamano. Oh, Alright. I'm kinda of waiting for another creature too, because I want to make use of the Scalding Viper, so I guess we'll just oh, God. Don't I can't psych myself out. Sometimes I psych myself out, and then I'm just like, what am I gonna do? We got these big life game. Let's just fight it. Double double Kamanu. And this Bishop of the Wings, though, if they start gaining life, I'm going to get real nervous real quick. All right. Oh, oh, okay. So no attacks. That's nice. Okay. Cemetery Gatekeeper. This is pretty nice, though. We do get two plus one plus one counters on our Cemetery Gatekeeper. So, all right. Yep. I guess we'll call out Creature, too. I mean, obviously, I'm assuming... Whenever they leave four open, I'm assuming a collected company is coming. I, I just have a feeling. 
So let's go ahead and just hit you here. Great revel. I need to find some sort of removal here. I know we're playing a little bit, um, a little bit sloppy. Probably shouldn't have done that. At least on my turn. Let's go for Kamado. I don't want to be a negative Nancy. I'm just trying to, trying to think of how we can win this. I know a Coco's coming. So let's go for Cemetery Gatekeeper. I actually am tempted to go for the play with fire because I know a Coco. I, it's obvious. I know a Coco's coming. Yeah, there it is. So at least we deal two extra damage to him. So Bishop of Wings. Oh, God. So, okay. Oh, God. Back up to 22, they go, and they create a 4-4. Four, four. Oh, oh, God, more. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, this is, uh... Hey, cheers to you. Cheers to you. You got it, you got it. We deal a meaningless 2 with the Cemetery Gatekeeper to their face because they get lost. But... Oh, God, and a Righteous Valkyrie. Yeah, this game is way over. 28 life, and look at this. Oh, they might just have lethal. They might just have lethal. They do. Wow, okay. That was, em that was embarrassing. Um, good game. Twig, how are you doing, Twig? All right, let's see what we got going on here. Let's go for you. Got to play with fire. We're looking good. We're looking a o good. And you know what a o? Oh god, my hair's hair's all crazy. There we go. It's always it's always crazy, but it's always gonna be a little semi crazy. So let's go for play of fire on the gilded goose. Um, yeah, I guess I will just kind of maintain curve here and shut the great revel. Let's see what we got going on here. I I mean, there's a bunch of decks that run the the goose. The goose is loose, but how? See, you no know, scout. Okay, so we at least deal some more damage. I have a feeling we kind of know this is probably the Amalia deck again. I think uh, the Amalia deck is like really, really popular. I understand why. Not, not hating. I get it. It's, it's a very, very good deck. And we don't have any of our removal spells, which is a little annoying because we're gonna kind of need those because if they get into their combo, we can't break the combo. But if maybe we can just kind of bull rush them. They're already down to twelve, which is pretty decent. So if we go for Torbrun, maybe we can kind of hit them. If they don't have the combo here, which is, you know... I think we're looking pretty good. I think we're looking pretty good. If we can swing in and... Ooh, Wild Growth Walker. Okay, so they do take four here. Wild Growth Walker. And they're tapped out, so that's good. Epicure will be nice on the next turn. So I think we're just... I think the play is just like a drop to Torbrun. We do have the Rune Map Ruins, so let's go ahead and swing in here. I, they might ch chump block both or just one. Probably just one. Oh, they do. Wow. Whoa, really? Yeah, no, I was going to say, you can't do both. That doesn't make any sense. So we deal four, and I think we're good. Because if they want to drop Amalia or anything like that, the Edelon, the, these Great Rebels are just going to kill you. So they're going to have to find a way to get rid of the Great Rebels. Otherwise, they're not going to be... Oh, Wow. Oh, yeah, as I say, a Coco can do it. A Coco is technically not casting, and it's a fourth. Thankfully, they don't have the Amalia or anything sort of like loop or anything like that, and we, we're just going to take it. So, uh, Voldaren Epicure, it's going to deal some to us, but who cares? Who cares? Down to 11 we go. That is going to be uh, down to three. Play of Fire, and we also have the Rune Map Ruins. But, uh, yeah, we're just dealing ourselves with the Great Rebel. We don't care, because that is GG's. We destroy them before they get into their little Wild Growth Walker uh, veteran combo stuff. Galai, how you doing here? So we got three Kamado faces Kagazan. Looks good to me. Looks good to me. Let's go for number one. Oh my gosh. Three Kamados. All right. So we don't have uh, the plus one. That's what I'm saying though. Like the plus one plus one counter is just pretty much like cherry on top. So I don't know if I want to go for a light up the stage or do I want to go for another Kamado. We could go for Kamado and then go for another a light up the stage because we are going to have the spectacle cost. I think I kind of want to do that. Otherwise, I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Let's 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 do this. I think this is okay. Never mind. You get made to spirit. So, yeah, I think I like that anyway. So now we still have the Kamanu up, and we got the Torbrun. Depending on what we do. Oh my God, that is four Kamanu faces Kakazan. That's a lot of Kamanu. All right. Um, sure. Sure. Let's go ahead and swing in. Obviously, we're looking. Pretty aggressive. I think mean, we're technically an aggressive deck, I believe you could call us. But um, I don't think it really. I guess we might as well pay. I don't think our our life is going to be that relevant. I think we either just burn them out or we don't. So I'm going to go for Kamado in case they have like a make disappear. If they have it, they have it. I'm still going to use it. If they use make disappear, that we at least get rid of a counter spell and then we can go for Torbrin. Because Torbrin is 
I mean, if we can drop the Torbid next turn and with our Kamanos going off, I mean, what else could you want? Divide by zero? Really? Wow. 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 I guess they were probably waiting for us to drop something like um, a little bit juicier so that they can divide by zero with that because they, they took some unnecessary damage there. But environmental sciences, pretty good card. They do gain a little bit of life, but ultimately I still... Ooh, we got the O'Hare now too, so we're looking pretty gosh darn awesome. This is, um, I think we're looking pretty good here. Got a shot. We're going to bolt ourselves in. Not bolt. Not bolt. Shock ourselves in. So let's go for Kamana Fixes Kakazan. We get two plus one plus one counters on our Corbin. Deal four to you. And now next turn, we got all the Kamano. And they're playing Simic. So I don't think they really have like board wipes. So Simic, I'm not really sure what they're supposed to do against us. All right. Um, The O'Hare is only good versus like a um, like, uh, non-combat. So I think we're going to wait till we get a land. And then we can drop O'Hare and go for Kamano. Because that way Kamano will deal six damage with the Torbrin and the O'Hare Deepest Might. So but let's, let's swing in first. Because this might just be enough. Unless they have something to really do something here. Simic is a weird deck, especially if you don't. I mean, they don't have they don't have like a um, removal really. So, well, divide by zero is removal, I guess. So they they they'll still take six here. Okay, environmental sciences is an okay card, but again, they, they, I don't. I just almost. I guess we just re recast this. I mean, I guess like what what could they have? Maybe we should go for Kamano. Maybe we just go for Kamano. And then go for a, a Scalding Viper. Because, like, what big spell can they really have? And then I go for Torbrin so that I can swing in without swinging with Torbrin himself, I guess. But it doesn't matter. Yeah, Simic just... Ugh, okay. Jagged Zero. Jagged Zero. How you doing? Looking good. Looking good. I don't know. These hands have been dynamite lately. Dynamite. As dynamite as mono red can be. So, well, we're not really mono red. I just, uh, just kidding. Just kidding. We're not mono. We got the, you see the Shiv and Reef? We're not mono red. Come on. All right, Epicure is going to burn you. Get a little blood action going. Let's see what we got. Hall of the Storm Giants. Wonderful card. Let's go out and get our Spire Bluff Canal. Looks good. I'm going to go ahead and drop you before you got anything too crazy going on. Let's see what we're playing, though. Let's see what we're playing. White. So this is going to be classic Azorius. I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Um, Let's go ahead and swing in. I don't know if I want to go for Bone Crusher Giant. In the instant, or do I want to just play it? Probably not. I may want to drop the ruins. I might want to even use the blood token if things get weird. So, all right. I guess we might as well just do what we can. I uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's go double. Let's go double stomp and play with fire straight to your face. I don't really care about the great revel dealing anything to my face. Um, we're still gonna we're gonna outrace you. It's either we're gonna uh, take control of the board. Or not. So my my life total does not matter. This Hall of the Storm Giants is no big deal. And of all that Epic here, I guess we can keep it. But I am looking for something with a little bit more upside. I guess we'll keep it. We do get blood tokens that way. So mm, I guess we'll keep it. It does kind of curve out nicely with the Bone Crusher Giant and the Epic here. But if they sweep the board. Hmm, down to eight. Let's pass. Let's pass. So, revitalize. Okay, well, this kind of cancels out. They do end up gaining one off of this. I think... I didn't... I elected not to go for Bone Crusher Giant because we are entering in Supreme Verdict territory. I think I'd rather just kind of chill on that. So, all right. Now we can go for a uh, Blood Token on a land because as long as we have enough for Den of the Bugbear, we're looking okay. Um, the only thing I'm really scared of is Settle the Wreckage. If they don't have Settle the Wreckage, I mean... If they have just some sort of spot. Okay, memory deluge. Well, now we know they don't have settled the wreckage. Now we're looking really good. So yeah, let's swing in here. Looks good. Looks great. So down to two, and now I mean now we just have the Runa map ruins our little land that can just kind of finish them off. We've got then of the bugbear. Uh, we even have the great revel in case they have like a little tiny spot removal. So the wandering emperor. I don't. This is not enough. Yeah, this is not enough. So. Emperor is going to remove our Great Revel. Oh, wow, they didn't even do Yeah, this is a good game. Control, not fast enough for Mono Red. Mono Red. 